Uh, so Machine Gun Kelly made a movie, um, unfortunately, and one of the most unfortunate things about this fucking train wreck is the fact that this made me listen to Machine Gun Kelly's music. I had gone months, I had gone months since fucking hearing Emo Girl on TikTok, and then I go to watch this movie because I'm like, yeah, this is probably gonna be pretty bad, I can make a little funny, funny little video on this, and then BAM. Within the first second, his stupid fucking voice comes on. I'm sorry. I apologize. I got a little heated. Yeah, this movie's a dumpster fire. I'm just gonna play a bit of the intro real quick. God, why is anyone up this early? He's texting me. Oh, it's Apple. That was the cringiest shit that I watched in a hot minute. And I go on TikTok every once in a while. The second most unfortunate part of this movie is Machine Gun Kelly cannot act. Also, he can't direct, neither can Mod Sun. If you didn't know, this movie was written and directed by Machine Gun Kelly and Mod Sun. They're musicians. Which doesn't inherently mean that they cannot do this. It just means they don't have the experience yet. And it shows. Like, if Machine Gun Kelly's acting was the only part of this movie that was off, I'd be like, okay, like, they're a good director. But other people's lines is clunky. The editing in this movie is clunky. It just goes to show that these people ain't directed a movie before. They don't really know what they're doing. Which makes sense. They made shit like this before. But that don't make it enjoyable to fucking watch just because they have a lack of experience. They don't make it better. Also, I don't really know who Modson is, but look at that fucking face. That is Cody Ko if he never went to Duke. Once I realized that dude looked like fucking Cody Ko, I literally could not stop seeing it the entire movie. It got really distracting, actually. But anyways, back to the movie. This video could literally just be clips of the movie that I string together, and that would make all my points for me. Like, I wouldn't need to come in here and give commentary because you kind of just get it. The movie... Like, look at this. Yeah, the finale premiered last night. I hope everyone liked it. Whoa, cold showers do make your dick small. What the fuck? Like, I don't even know what to say. Like, the movie is supposed to be a comedy. It's supposed to be like a 420 stoner comedy. The trailer was released on 420, but the fatal flaw of this comedy is it's not fucking funny. The only time I laughed at this movie was Machine Gun Kelly's best friend's character stole a piece of cooked shrimp, walked to the next scene, threw it in a pool and said like, you're free now, little buddy. That, that made me giggle a little bit. But other than that, I was pretty bored. The most interesting stuff was like the weird shit. Like for example, right here, there's this weird ass cut. Wow, I'm so, I am so sorry. But my assistant forgot to remind me. <laughs> Welcome to my house. Like if you look at that, that's that, that's a bit odd. It, it don't really flow right. Like it, what? And so much of this movie is like weird narration done by Machine Gun Kelly, but it doesn't really flow well with the story. Like it cuts up the pace of the story and it's odd and comes off. It's very cringy and forceful. This movie feels like the Smosh movie in the sense that like the film aspects of this movie is not the best, like the writing, the directing, the editing, like it's a bit messy, but instead of the funness that comes with the Smosh movie, because you can tell that they at least enjoyed making it, instead they replaced any passion uh, with celebrity cameos, which doesn't make the movie better. And one thing I noticed about Machine Gun Kelly's writing is he doesn't understand how to like transition from different areas very well in a cohesive manner because like look at this i don't want to hit that me either oh my god there's a title card right here but the previous shot was them traveling in the car they didn't need to put that fucking card right there because it was already established that they was traveling it just like, cuts up the fucking pace in the movie and makes it like stupid <laughs> the rest of this video could literally me just point out shit that like didn't really make sense in this movie like fucking some jokes that don't land or weird cuts or weird i don't know weird writing or weird acting but that's literally every single part of this movie so that would not be fun to like do because i'd literally just be like show you the entire movie in full and be like that was a bit strange that was a bit odd now wasn't it so instead i'm gonna summarize the plot for y'all so the movie starts up with machine gun kelly waking up to a text from his girlfriend that says good morning but the morning is not spelled like morning it's spelled like i'm mourning the death of someone followed up with a text like something along the lines of like oh i wish i could tell you this in person or some shit like that anyways machine gun kelly's character fucking interprets this as like a red flag like she's gonna break up with them because it's morning as in like oh somebody died as in pours to morning like oh my god good morning i love you happy to see you what a wonderful wonderful fucking day but he can't get in contact with his girlfriend or something and then you get introduced to all his friends and there's like weird narration for every single one of them i don't really get it we see machine gun kelly's ass at one point during this introduction that was a bit strange. Didn't really want to see that, to be completely honest. But Machine Gun Kelly is playing this character named London, who's an actor in his TV show that does fairly well, I guess. So Machine Gun Kelly's trying to figure out, like, he's trying to get in contact with his girlfriend, but then he also has to go talk to his manager because he's trying to play the Batman. He's trying to get a role in the new Batman movie as the Batman. And he pretty much gets the role. He just has to go meet with the director first. But the problem is, he can't get in contact with his girlfriend, and there's a bit of a misunderstanding between them, and then he's worried that something's happening. So then he goes to her house, 
but like she's not there but he doesn't have his phone because trippy red threw a water balloon and broke his phone and he doesn't remember his girlfriend's phone number so he goes to her house she's not home he breaks into her house him and his friends fuck up his girlfriend's urns also his girlfriend is played by becky g i know didn't think becky g would be in this fucking movie when i put this on that fucking shocked me i was like okay Kikonyo, I don't understand, but it's fine, whatever. But anyways, yeah, they fuck up all of his girlfriend's urns or whatever, and then they have to go fix that. So what they do, their solution is they smoke a bunch of weed because apparently the ashes from weed is the only thing that matches the consistency of a human corpse, which doesn't make no fucking sense. You could literally go fucking roast a pig, same difference. But anyways, they smoke a bunch of weed, and Megan Fox is playing their, like, best friend who's a lesbian or something. I don't know. She smokes a fucking huge blunt or some shit. I don't know. It was weird. They get really high or whatever. And sorry, I'm really trying to remember the plot. Like it, it <laughs> I watched this. Like I just got done watching this movie. I cannot remember. <laughs> so the Machine Gun Kelly goes with his assistant to go to the meeting with the director and his friends go to the house to put the urn back. But while his friends are there to put the urn back, they see his girlfriend leaving with this really buff dude. And so they call him, and so Machine Gun Kelly doesn't go to the meeting. His agent gets mad or whatever the fuck. So the Machine Gun Kelly goes to his girlfriend's house. Oh my God, his girlfriend and the dude just left. And his friends think that she's cheating on him with the dude or whatever. But oh no, Machine Gun Kelly is late to the fucking meeting or whatever the fuck. So his friends go to the meeting and he goes to look for his girlfriend. And so one of his friends who doesn't look nothing like him puts on a fucking elephant mask, goes to the meeting and pretends to be Machine Gun Kelly. While Machine Gun Kelly is at the airport trying to find his girlfriend because they went to the airport or something. And then Machine Gun Kelly gets punched by the dude his girlfriend was with. And Dennis Rodman's there. And De Dennis Rodman streams the punch. Machine Gun Kelly falls to the ground. He gets kidnapped by his stalker. She stitches up his wound on his head. Drives him home. Also, his friends got arrested because they were seen leaving the house after they broke into the house. But as Machine Gun Kelly arrives home, his girlfriend is there, Becky G sees him with the stalker thinks he's cheating on her and drives off so then everyone goes to the jail to pick up their friends and now they're trying to find the girlfriend so they go around la to different parties and stuff they do ketamine and there's a bunch of dumb jokes it looks like machine gun kelly's life's falling apart he don't have his girlfriend and because his friend fucked up the meeting with the director it doesn't look like he's gonna be able to play Batman. Oh my God. Then they go to this diner, they're sitting there, but all of a sudden his agent is called. It's like, yo, I don't know if it was implied that like she sucked the dude's dick or whatever, but he got the part or something. He, he's Batman now. And then he was able to call his girlfriend and then he goes to drive to meet his girlfriend to like explain like, oh, why there's been so much miscommunication this day. And it's all these crazy happenstances, whatever the fuck. Anyways, they're going there. They drive into each other because Machine Gun Kelly is texting and driving. They wake up in a hospital and then the credits play. And then it's shown that that was the finale of the show that he was in. It wasn't real. Does that make sense? I have no fucking clue if what I just said sounded comprehensible at all. And that's me describing the plot after I've watched the movie, after I seen that shit. While I was watching the movie, it didn't feel like there was a plot. It felt like shit just happened. Like they just did shit to do shit. And there was a loose overarching narrative that like he wanted to get back, he wanted to find his girlfriend or something. The movie sucks. It's not good. That's where I don't even know what else to say about this movie. Like normally when I watch a movie, Regardless of whatever it is, I try and find like some like narrative to spin on it. Like something like educational to get from it at least if I can. Or like some overarching narrative for the video. But this movie is so inconsistent. And I don't mean inconsistent as in there's good parts and bad parts. I mean inconsistent as in nothing lines up. The plot doesn't go where it should. I don't fucking know how to describe this movie. My brain is fucking exhausted trying to make this incomprehensible piece of shit. Comprehensible for my audience. The things I do for y'all. I'm just a young woman trying to get this shit done. It is killing me. It's killing me, goddammit. I think the only way you could enjoy this movie is if he was fucked up. But then again, if you was fucked up, why the fuck would you be watching this shit? Go fucking dance. Go have fucking sex or something. Do something cooler than this. I don't fucking know. Anyways, I hope you like the video. If you like the video, like the fucking video. Comment wherever the fuck. Click this video right here if you like the video. I'm sure you're gonna like that video if you like this video. Bye-bye. Love you. Thanks for watching the video. See you later.